Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how we shape next the Texas Toast Plate. Hey everybody, this is Matt, we're Texas Toast Guitarists. Thanks for watching. So today I wanted to do a quick video about how we do necks and uh, uh, specifically how we go from a big chunk of timber like this to a shaped neck at one of our wood, sweat, and beers uh, guitar building workshops. So I have a neck here that uh, is ready to be shaped. Um, the reason that we keep everything as big as we possibly can for as long as we possibly can is because the as soon as it gets round, it gets harder to do everything. So I like to press in frets and do binding and do inlay and do side dots and all of that stuff with, um, with the neck as flat as I can possibly be in most orientations. So, um, but now it's time to get the shaping. So um, the first thing we have to do is we have to trim a bunch of this off with the bandsaw. So let's jump right in and you guys can follow along at home or if you're on your way to one of our workshops, uh, you'll kind of have an idea of what to expect when it's neck shaping day. All right, let's get started. All right, so here we are at the bandsaw and we're ready to hack some of this neck meat away. Um, what we have to do is measure one inch from the top of the fretboard. This is, again, this is for our necks. Okay, so there you go. That's pretty close to one inch right there from the top of the fretboard. Then we can draw a line. And we're not trying to get, you know, like everything exactly perfectly right here. We're really just trying to get a bunch of this meat removed. And now we need to draw a line that's five eighths of an inch from the top of the headstock. So that's, there we go, that's good enough. <clears throat> okay, all of our necks uh, have a volute unless the customer asks for one to not be there. So we're gonna add a little more meat to our line just to kind of Hedge our bets. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this big section off and uh, the bandsaw is the ideal tool to do that. I forgot to mention that if you want your neck to be more than one inch from the top of the fretboard to the back of the neck, one inch is gonna be not enough. So you need to remember to do this to the size of the dimensions that the neck that you want. It is rare though to find a customer who wants a neck that is over one inch, but mm, you guys might like big necks, I don't know. All right, next thing we gotta do is cut the back of this uh, off of the headstock. And same tool, same action, just, uh, you know, Gonna go for it. Okay, the next thing that we have to do is we have to get our headstock the right, the right thickness. And for that, we're going to use our uh, shop made thickness sander, AKA the old man machine right back here. Um, <clears throat> and remember guys, when you're at one of our classes, we'll be there the whole time to walk you through this stuff. So, you know, if I'm going fast, um, you know, it's really just so I can show you everything in one video that's not five hours long. All right, let's go to the old man machine. All right, 
right, so now I've got my headstock is the right thickness, just over um, a half an inch. And I've drawn some lines on here to represent where I need to stop cutting so that I don't make my neck profile go into the body or into the headstock any more than I want it to. So now we're gonna go over to my beloved pin router and we're gonna remove a bunch of this material and then check out the deadhead sander where we'll start to contour the, um, uh, the neck. This is gonna go pretty fast, so stay up with me and then we're gonna get to some hand tools and uh, we'll be done. All right, so we're pretty much done with the uh, the big power tools and I'm all covered with man glitter. Um, the next thing that we want to do is, um, uh, well, let, you know what, let's talk about what we did in those last couple of steps. So the, the pin router took off a, um, a significant chunk of the neck meat. We have a 7 eighths round over bit in that and we just kind of plow through this until, um, until we get it close. Then we go over to the dead head sander and we start to profile the neck. Now, what I was looking for when I was checking with calipers is I want to be about 8.6 at the first fret and 9.0 at the 12th fret. That's just the way that I make necks. You guys can make necks however, you know, whatever profile you want. And then I wanted to make sure that I, I didn't have any flat spots in the neck. So, you know, I'm constantly checking it. And there's a few in here, but, but nothing that, uh, that we can't take out later by hand, but you'll notice that my headstock, uh, where the neck transitions and stops being a neck and becomes a headstock looks a little bit, a little bit off, and my heel is pretty close but could use some work too. So we are going to um, draw some more lines on here and, um, uh, and use a rasp to get this to be closer. Now, Generally speaking, you want the tip of your volute to be directly under the nut. So as you can see, it's it needs to be moved that away. Oh, about about that much. So um, we'll probably go back to the old man machine and and sort that out. But while we're here, let's go ahead and um, and do some rasp work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm and get these transitions to look right. Okay, I lied when I said I was gonna wait and do the, uh, the old man machine. Since it was already set up, I went ahead and did it. So we're gonna draw some lines now to give us an idea of what we want our volute to look like, you know, and where we want our neck to stop being a neck and start being a headstock. Okay, I've got this, um, I've got my neck clamped to just a piece of piece of plywood with some holes drilled in it. Uh, it's a low-tech operation, guys. You don't need to uh, you don't need to worry about exactly what mine looks like. You can make yours look however you want. 
I've just got a rasp. This one's from Amazon. You don't have to have a, uh, you know, a really expensive rasp to do this because all we're going to do is clean up this neighborhood right here. When I got my neck clamped in my uh, on my little jig here, I like to stick my belly into it. That's how you know that uh, the, the good Lord loves guitar builders, and it's the way that Jesus and Leo Fender want you to, to shape necks. Um, okay, so um, the first thing we want to do is just kind of start, start shaping this a little bit and, um, and make it look right. Now remember, you've got more than just this one this one facet here. You need to go all the way down and get the um, the headstock and the neck shaped shaped to be to be right. Now, when I'm doing this side, it's easy to kind of angle the rasp a little bit, and you'll get a chip on the other side of the headstock. So, use caution, okay? But we want to get as much of that stuff out with the rasp as we can. If you guys come to one of our workshops when you're doing this, I'm going to be walking around and I'm going to go, you need to take more off right here because it feels like that transition can be smoother. This is this is something that kind of uh, kind of eludes most new neck shapers. You know what I mean? Is how to get this how to work this in. Okay, so once you think you're getting pretty close, you know, and what I like to tell people is don't look at it and touch it, touch it and, and let your fingers and your, you know, or your hand tell you where, um, where you need to remove more material. So the, the, the idea is that you're your fingers are, are more sensitive than your eyes will allow them to be. Your eyes will go, nope, that looks great, and tell your fingers, yeah, you, you've done enough. But if you don't look at it and you just feel and, you know, make sure that, that, that everything feels right, then that's, that's what you want, okay? All right, that looks pretty good. Let's go to the other side. The reason I rarely chip out this side is because my rasp is going to be coming the other direction. Okay, and again, you want to just feel this and just make sure that, that it feels right. You guys are all know what a guitar neck should feel like. Make it feel like that. Constantly be feeling and checking for any bumps. patches that don't feel right. Okay, the other thing is, is I, I know guys I'm, I'm moving around the neck, but the more you stay in the center of the neck, the more you're going to be able to see stuff and feel stuff. Okay, All right. that is actually looking pretty decent and it's feeling even better. One thing I forgot to tell you guys about is if you just look, sometimes the grain of the wood can give you a, give you a misleading idea of what you're, of what's actually happening. Okay? All right, that feels pretty good. Now let's shift it over and do the heel. Exact same technique. Um, yeah, I'm going to use this high-tech high -tech radius gauge, and we're going to file to the line, or thereabouts. And one thing I want you guys to pay particularly close attention to is the center here, when you start to, when you start to work this middle part. Because what I don't want you to do is put a low patch in here that we have to then grind the rest of the neck down to uh, to match, okay? So make sure that this patch here that we did on the deadhead sander stays stays the same all the way through and you don't feel a low, a low patch right here. 
Okay, now that we've got our neck shape with uh, all the power tools and the rasps and the files and the this, that, and the other, it's time to switch to sandpaper. You are going to need, and if you come to one of the workshops, you will be issued one quarter sheet of every single uh, piece of sandpaper that you're gonna need, starting with 60, going to 80, 100, 120, 150, and finally 220. This should be enough 60 grit for you to move forward to the next round of, of sandpaper. But if it's not, guys, like I say, use sandpaper like you're not paying for it. Because once this stuff gets dull, it doesn't really do anything anymore. Okay, <clears throat> so you've got your piece of sandpaper here. This is what I see normally guys take their block and they wrap it around like this and they start going for it. No, 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 no. So what I like to do is size the paper to the block. And remember, you're gonna need at least one block. Okay, fold the edges in and get it Get it to where you don't have any, any like rolls, you know what I mean? You want the paper to fit snug on the block, okay? Just like that. Now you're ready to, uh, to start sanding. When you run out of flat things that need to be sanded, switch to your uh, flip-flop um, or your flexible sanding block. But um, we've got a few areas that uh, need, to be, uh, need to be sorted out with the flat, so let's do those first. All right, obviously the back of the headstock is something that needs to get uh, to needs to get your attention with the block. Make sure to pay close attention to this patch here because it's the hardest to get. What happens is it's real easy to work the part that's real easy to get and it's easy to forget about this end bit. And what we're trying to do here is get rid of the file marks and the tool marks left from the previous steps. As a matter of fact, all the sanding steps are going to be removing the scratches left from the previous step. I'm not going to pay any attention to this side part because this neck's getting glued in, so I don't want to um, I don't want to make this any thinner. So those are about all the flat places that we can do. Um, you can work the sides of the neck with the, uh, the block, and I, I, I would say let's do that with the, uh, the 60 grit paper, but as you go up through the grits, you can switch to, your, um, to the flip-flop. This chunk that we had left over from our quarter sheet of paper, we're gonna use that to get into these tight areas here. And remember, gang, 60 grit is, uh, is a material removing aggressive piece of sandpaper. <clears throat> All right, that looks pretty good, except for this radius right here. So we're gonna try and, try and get the scratches out of that as best we can. <clears throat> Might be a good time to switch to our, our flexible sanding block. You can also, take your thumb and, and back a piece of sandpaper and actually pull it to get into some of those tight contours, <clears throat> okay? All right, so you guys saw the, uh, the sandpaper technique there. We're gonna go all the way, like I said, from 60 grit to 220 grit. And just like on those cooking shows, I have another neck here that is done and beautiful. Um, this is for, we're making two guitars that are essentially the same, but one is left-handed. So, um, so this neck is ready to go. The other neck needs to be sanded with 80 up to 220 because I'm done with, um, with the 60 grit now. So guys, if you are interested in coming out to my shop and learning to uh, shape necks the way we do here at Texas Toast, uh, link in the description below to all of our wood, sweat, and beers guitar building workshops where we take wood and sweat and uh, when the day's all done we have a couple of beers and at the end of the week you get something really really nice um, plus you make a lot of great friends and you get to hang out and have a great week uh, making making guitars what's cooler than that but if you uh, if you just have some regular questions about what we did in the video please leave them in the comment section below if you like the video give me the thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed yet why don't you hit that subscribe button 
And if you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat stuff like this. If you can't do Patreon though, we totally get it. Just like and share the video as many places as you can possibly imagine and help us grow the channel that way. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Host reminding you that life is short. You might as well have a cool guitar and it's even cooler if you make it yourself. And if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. Thanks for watching you guys. We'll see you next time. Oh,